Good morning and welcome to the gold medal game at the Australian Ultimate Championship for 2024. My name is Andy Maroney and this morning joined by Oakley Mullen. Oakley, this is the one we've came to see. It absolutely is the one we've come to see and it's going to be an absolute cracker, Andy. We've got perfect frisbee conditions right now and honestly, I'm excited for it. So you're looking at Sunder Slice in white to the left of screen. They'll be pulling to Ellipsis, wearing dark on the left of screen. Uh, for those just tuning in, we were treated to a uh, double game point finish in the bronze medal men's match between uh, Hot Chili and Fishwick. Went right down to the last point with Tom Rigaki catching one of his, uh, was it seven or eight goals? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, I think it was two goals and something like seven, seven assists. assists. That's right. Uh, so Chile, a real good success story, not making Div 1 only a few years ago to now. Getting to a semi and then winning the bronze medal match. But both teams here are both convincing winners in their semis. Uh, Ellipsis, I think, getting it done 17, uh, sorry, 15-5 and Sundar 15-7. So definitely the, uh, the two best teams here deserve to be in this. And speaking of gold medal matches, we have the uh, bronze medal matches. We have the women's bronze going on behind us, so we'll try and bring you those updates throughout the stream. And the first pull is a brick. Wow, that's a monster because that was blading. So a brick out straight out the back. Uh, and anyone who's been watching over the weekend, the wind direction has slightly changed. Most of the weekend it was going from the right to left and now it seems to have changed for today and it's slightly going in that left to right. Exactly, yeah. So it'll be Tullet taking it up. He taps it in and we're away. First point of the Div 1 Nationals final. John O'Keefe goes up the line, not on it. Instead back to Ollie Lochnan. Lockton moves to Rob Andrew. Andrew marked by his fellow Goanna, Braden Cheng. And a nice early D look. Lockton manages to reel it in. Looks to Rob Andrew. Rob up to Braden. It sits oh! up. Conrad and Rob both uh, very close. Very close. We've got a great angle here, but also the game advisors have been uh, invited nice and early. Oh, that, that's close. <laughs> oh, it got Harcoed. That's simultaneous, guys. Looked pretty simultaneous. We've got... Same time. So just getting the game advisor giving his perspective after he also watched the TV for that disc to get absolutely taco. Yeah. How's this for first point intensity right into it? If you didn't know you're in a Nationals final, you do now, Rob Andrew. Mark by Conrad, bidding on oh. the line, another bid. Number 52. Number 52 uh, changed his number from number nine. Going out in solidarity Dennis. with a mate who did his ACL. Oh, that's nice. Lochnan on the end zone line. Wants to bounce it off, does bounce it off. Looks for the give go, doesn't get it. A little bit of contact and now the foul call. That will be Dennis Tran <laughs> calling the foul. Put the hands out. So Tran and uh, Chulet. I think it's fair enough. I understand because Tran initiated contact and then Cupcake gave it back. So you kind of got to take the good with the bad. I think we're going to expect a fair amount of argy bargy this game, Moz. And I, you know, I think with the level of intensity we're expecting, that's not uncommon either. No, play the uh, hard, sport hard and play it fair and play right on the line. We would have head shake there from Tom Toolett, as the foul was called. <laughs> Disbelief. And sometimes, and I kind of, you know, it's it's frustrating to watch sometimes as a, a spectator you see these calls. But I'll, I kind of like the fact they're calling it now because both teams kind of feel each other out a little bit and go, all right, well, what level of say physicality or bids or contact are we going to mutually accept? And if they set that nice and early. 
then it should be a really good game. What you don't want to see is this happen in the later, latter stages or in the, near the end of a game when the interpretation or how the rules are applied change. That's it, the frustrating one. Exactly. You don't want to see teams start to make calls but, as a reaction to the score. A, yeah, that, that wasn't a, a, a call at the same point at the start of the game. So they needed to get it done twice. They do. First blood, Andrews to McGuckin. What a first point. On paper, a clean hold, but uh, it probably doesn't feel like that. <laughs> Not without its calls. We've had a couple of stoppages so far, but as you said, Moz, both teams just feeling each other out. I'm sure in a couple of points we'll be in a nice groove. Can't imagine there's going to be a lot of clean holds throughout this game, though. It's going to be so hotly contested. Yeah, it's good we've got the game advisors here, as we said. Just uh, neutral parties take the heat out of anything. Both teams very passionate. Got everything to play for. They've worked so hard, not only throughout the weekend, but the entire season to get themselves into a position to take home the gold. <laughs> uh, Rory, big shout out to Rory Connell. Standard for physical contact will likely end up being poorly refereed rec league basketball. <laughs> Never change, Rory. Love your work. Wouldn't mind seeing you uh, out here in a jersey running around yourself, but uh, shout out to wherever you are. All right. And this one will land in. So, geez, there's going to be some big, big pulls lady this game. pulls. So we have Sunder. There's Alex Scan, marked tightly by Keys. Big under on the other sideline to Nyo. Gan going up the line, but he looks off Blakely coming for an under. Oh, Keys fight. tried to peel off the back and he's lost Gan. Yeah, Mike Neal's out here on his own in an absolute paddock. The bottom of the screen you can see. So Go. we just saw there, John O'Keys did peel off Alex Scan and tried to get in the space in front of it. And in doing so, there's now been a little bit of switchy D, which has left Mike Neal in acreage. Yeah, so it looks like Ellipsis almost running like a triangle D. You can see downfield these three defenders. One's going to be taking away the front of stack. McGuckin's sitting in the deep space, but it means that Neal is free. Oh, huge D, huge bid. Bit oh. of contact called on that one, though, Moz. We're, we're a long way away, but I don't think Sam could have done much more to try and avoid the contact. He worked really hard to avoid. I thought he did really well, but I think the Sunder player is say, saying there was contact on the arm, not necessarily the body. We do not have best perspective on no. that one, unfortunately. So big D attempts and bids from both sides early on. This one uncontested will stay. So this is Van der Weeden. Gan coming under. Oh, Keys again taking off that option. So crossfield to Blakely. Nice break. Very fine scan. Far sideline. Big mark. Crossfield. Oh. oh. Oh, and there he's in an open space. Mike Neal didn't quite see who got the assist. I think it might have been Leon Yo, but I'm not 100% sure. Huge bids from both teams early on. That's the standard we're going to see in this final. We see the replay here. There's Gan. With that inside, uh, inside yeah, to Leon Yo. Mike Neal. Sitting in the end zone in all that space. Yeah, well, I think you mentioned it earlier in the point, Oakley. There was a lot of poaching, um, but it was aggressive poaching, if you know what I mean, because the players, there were, there were multiple bids in that, even that last, just before that last throw, um, some big bids. So it's going to be intense. We did see there, yeah, lots of big bids. And as you said, they were playing a bit of that triangle defense. And I think what happened on that last one, sorry, was we bring up Sunder Slice here. So the big names which we've already seen so far, Alex Scan, Mike Neald, probably going to see a bit of Gav Moore, Peter Blakely. Absolutely glittered with names on this team. Yeah. 
Dingoes, Crocs, Goannas, you name it. One apiece. One apiece and almost what we'd consider upwinders, Moz. Yeah, correct, yep. So Sunder, Alex Gann coming out with the pull again. Is it going to be a blade? Is it going to stay in field? Oh, I think yes. he took a little bit off that one. Yeah, for sure. Moves it up to Tulit. Tulit, the brick mark, fakes to Halden, eventually throws to Halden, marked by Sutton. Back to Tulit, Tulit, over to Timocles, Copeland, but uh, oh. runs under it. And we've got the first genuine turn of the game. Sutton, Mitch Sutton, captain, one of the captains of this team, needs to show the composure. Does. Tran. <gasps> Chang. He always looks like he's going to put the hammer up. Alex Gann coming through, but so tightly marked. Sutton again, looking for the around, but can't get it. Looking for the inside, can't get there. Gann trying to provide an option. Chang gets a disc to him. He goes the up around. Oh, toad. Floaty backhand. Just toad in there. Can't quite catch the number on that one. Sorry. First break of the game. It's first break, though, to Sunder. Early break. Braden Cheng to Fisher Day. So good D from Ellipsis on the end zone line, kind of holding them out. But uh, good composure also from Sunder. There were a couple of those counts got higher, but they, they didn't throw anything speculative. And Was Cheng got that high release backhand break for the goal. It was great dump D there, as you see that the Max Halden was so close to that one there. That high release backhand from Cheng had a lot of wobble on it, so it didn't mm. have a lot of go. And Fisher Day doing really well to just tow it in. And as we're looking at the comments online, seeing that we're loving the Gan Jono matchup, crazy dogfight there, Moz. Yep, accurate summation. And we have 358 people watching on the stream. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Keep the comments coming through. So Ellipsis needing to get this one in to stay, to stay in the game. Ball goes up and it'll be Chewett to take it. Just letting it roll. Very deep stack. Not a lot of options coming forward. So he goes back to Keys. McGuckin providing a nice under with the cheeky scoop. Andrews hits deep. Comes back under. Nice toes it in on the sideline. It's another good matchup, this one. Goes the around to Lochnan. Loses a bit of ground, but that's okay. Keys quickly on the dump. Andrews again, hitting this close sideline. There is no cuts coming from the stack right now. Keys there on the jinky dump. Andrews back downfield, but it's covered. Goes back around to Chulet. Right at the brick mark. Halden getting up right on the doorstep. There's McGuckin. Much nicer offense from Ellipsis there. Yeah, good intensity from Sunder. I'm really going to enjoy that uh, Andrews Neild matchup. A couple of the B boys going at it. Key matchups are key Let's go, in these types of games, Moz, and I think we're going to see a lot of the same ones appearing over and over again. So we check out the stats here. Or uh, Sam McGuckin, two from two for the Ellipsis goals right now. Uh, so just some comments on the stream there, Moz, asking who's been stronger team throughout the tournament so far? Well, you'd say Sunder, but only just, because the only uh, game uh, that Ellipsis have lost was to Sunder uh, in a pool play, uh, and that went to double game points. So there's really, 
on paper, it's under, but I don't think there's anything splitting them. I think they're, they're clearly the two um, best teams from this weekend. Um, I think a couple of other teams have underperformed, but uh, they've stood up when it matters as we uh, take a look at the Ellipsis team. Uh, a couple are uh, named there not playing, so Peter Ely, uh, John McNaughton both injured. Uh, but apart from that, I think they're a res reasonably uh, full-strength squad. Uh, and you've already called the likes of uh, Rob Andrew, Tom Tulett, and uh, Sam McGuckin as being some of their key players, as well as a pretty handy addition in John O'Keys, who uh, in that game that we did stream was probably best on ground. Absolutely agree with you there, Moss. We see Gan with the disc, that Gan Keys matchup. And there's again, Andrew's on the disc there. So back with Gan, he goes a nice around flick to this close sideline to Mark Wee, puts it up. Oh! He's dropped it. He's dropped it right in the end zone. Nick Whitlock. That's a little bit tricky. It was coming in a little bit hot, but he got a decent mitt to it. And it was really good uh, composure from the Sunder stack. They actually had two players that could have gone. He had to take it at full extension. Just got a little bit big on him. Full extension there. Uh, it came from like the inside backhand as opposed to the around flick. So maybe the flight path of the disc definitely had some impact on that. Keys bringing the disc in. Andrews riding up the cart, but he goes cross field to Lou. Copland coming back. Nice inside flick. It's got a lot of height to it. Mark Wee getting in front position. I don't think Tim McLeod's, uh teammates are doing him any favours, to be honest. That's the second throw he's had go over his head. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I thought that was going to be this nice with Blakely inside to Fisher Day. That's his second. So Fisher Day getting the stats on the board here. The assists being spread nicely amongst the Sunder O-line. Staying, uh, staying tight. They are maintaining that one break advantage. So seeing the impact that that wind is having on the disc as it just absolutely gets flipped up here. Tim McLean's Coppola always has to do a little 360 to read it, and that yeah. gives Mark Wee the opportunity to get underneath it and yeah. thrash it out of field. Well, Mark knew that if he got the position, got that inside position, it was going to make life really hard for Tim McLean to A, get it, and B, get it without contact. That's exactly right. And with the defense, you just have to get a hand to it. Best, op best is obviously catch your Ds. We've seen... Uh, Seen all weekend what can happen if you don't catch those Ds, but if you get front position and can mack the disc out of field, takes the yes, opportunity good. away from offense. Yeah. So uh, feedback in on the chat. Mike Neal is the goat. That's actually a true fact. That's exactly what he is. I think you just have to say it's a fact because all facts are true, aren't they, Moz? No, no, no. True facts are even more true. <laughs> Cupcake's seen something he likes, and it's you know who, Sam McGuckin, for his third goal of the game. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Moz. Sam McGuckin in the end zone is working for them. So three apiece. I think Sunder just up one break. One throw score there from the Ellipsis offense. Tom Tullett just picking it up, seeing McGuckin in the end zone as the target, hitting it. Sideline relatively quiet at this point in time, not getting too rowdy yet. Yeah, give that time. <laughs> give it time, it will, it'll happen. Rob Andrews with the pull. Sunders O-line out there looking to hold. Maintain that uh, slight break advantage. Nice pull. 
Oh, just Awful lands call. out of bounds. Alex Gann looks like oh, he's almost milking that one to go. So walking it up to the brick mark. Gann drawing the Andrews card at this point. Nice break. Oh, fumble from Mark Wee and Copland. It just dipped on him in the last minute. I think we'll have a great angle of it with our uh, second camera, but it just at the last minute, the wind just pushed Here it down. Watch this. See it again. Oh, that's oh. brutal. That's brutal. Nothing Mark Wee could have really done about no, that. Not at all, no. So nice match up. Lownan coming in, Blakely marking. McGuckin goes deep, why wouldn't you? Instead it comes under. Foreman. Fakes his mark off, makes his mark bid and go. Sitting up, Chulet manages to get underneath it and tow it in. Finds Lochnan on the around. Yeah, I think they've got to stop letting those arounds out. Make them throw inside. Chulet now. Finds Andrews on the far sideline. Looking to try and get it. High release backhand. That's better. Nice outside swinging backhand to lock it. He pops it. Oh! And who is it? It's McGuckin for his fourth goal. He's having a reasonable game, young Sam. And that's ellipsis on the break back, Moz. Back on serve. McGuckin absolutely chalking it up. Yeah, he's doing it all. So you see here that nice backhand out to Lochnan. It's quite low, but McGuckin does the work. There's been a timeout to Sunder here. Quick discussions happening, trying to stifle that ellipsis momentum as they've got the last two in a row. Unfazed, we're going unfazed by that. Oh, he's pretty happy with himself. Well, wouldn't you be? Four goals in a national final. The wind picking up a bit. It's very blustery, very swirly right now. Unpredictable. Lips are still in their huddle, taking a little bit more time. Here they go, Ellipsis getting themselves ready on the line. Sunder O-line coming out, ready to fire. He's got a pretty tall line on from uh, from Sunder. Got a pretty tall squad though. Yeah. It was. Yeah. But when you got Neil and Gav both out there as well as uh, Tex, you're going to give some teams headaches. Looking at that line and knowing that they're all really tall, but it just looks like a very Average height line because everyone's tall. Yeah. Sideline starting to get loud. And there it is. Whoa. Big pull. Rolls out. So they'll get to take it from the front of the end zone because it rolled out. Whitlock. Whitlock, New Zealand import. Yeah, they call it. What were they calling him? Uh, Kiwi Gak. <laughs> I like it. Oh, Lockton trying to get on his guts. So Sundar playing pretty aggressively. Whitlock. Oh!
Everyone looking for the replay. He's got a big smile on his face. It's a great bid regardless. <laughs> Here's we see a little bit for closer angle from camera two. Oh, and we can't really see as Blakely's running right in front of the camera and blocks the vision. If you see on the replay, though, Andrews does well to adjust yeah, to take the front position, line. to take yeah. the inside line. Uh, as we said, we don't really have the capacity. We do oh, Whitlock asking to see the, the camera, to see the vision, but as we said before, we don't really have the best view on that. <laughs> he comes to the screen, turns on his heels. <laughs> he's sent back. He's waving it away. There's no contest on the, uh, sorry, retracted call. So the turn's dead. So Andrews is, Andrews, <laughs> violation on that one. He tries to jump the gun slightly. <laughs> Whitlock not in position. So Rob Andrews, hard work on defense, a great bid. It'll stand and this gives Ellipsis now a chance to uh, put their first break of the game in. So Lockton gonna get the disc. Timically setting up in the sack, just hoping someone can actually throw him a nice chess one. Yeah. Oh! And this one he catches. Ollie Lockton goes the bladey around backhand to Copland. Ellipse is now up a break. And they've got the momentum now in this game. Sunder a little flat. So the last two goals scored by Ellipsis have been breaks, Moz. So their D-line have been working hard and getting the turns. Yeah, it's nice when you can, uh, when you can put your kind of O team in cotton wool, just have them on the sideline there, staying fresh and uh, watching your D-line go to work and put a few breaks in in a row. Lots of jinky movements around that dump space from Copland, and he got free down the line. Blady around backhand from Lochnan sealed the deal. Sidelines are starting to get loud, starting to get a little bit rowdy. Intensity is increasing. Big floaty pull. Fielded by Blakely. Immediately moves it today. On the far sideline now with Nyo. We coming under, but he's looked off. Fisher Day going down the line, but he's looked off. Whitlock trying to ride off, and he puts it up. Lockton's there again. Oh. They're going to go quickly as well here. Keys back to Lockton, moving it quickly. Stagnant downfield, so it goes back to Keys. Tula on the around, close sideline, and he puts it up. He's got McGuckin and Andrews, and who else would you be wanting under that? McGuckin. Number five? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, number five for McGuckin. Who else would you be wanting on the end of that? Tom Tula to Sam McGuckin. We've heard that one a few times throughout the game so far. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Sunder Burn one here. Thunderbird one just not that long ago. Oh, whatever they did, it didn't work. So, <laughs> burn another one, try something else. So you see that one go up again. Ollie Lochnan providing just enough pressure to Alex Gann there to force the turn. That's three breaks in a row from the Ellipsis men. Yeah, fantastic momentum from Ellipsis now. Trying to keep that train steaming along. And the Lips' men made quick work of that one as soon as the turn occurred. Ollie Lockton picking it up and moving the disc quickly before the Sunder defense really had an opportunity to set in. Let's go. Here we go, Lippy. One, two, three. 
Here, Maxi Halden getting loud on the sideline. Always brings a lot on the sideline of uh, Max. I'm about it. I'm here for that level of oh, intensity. Sure. Oh, it's going to land just in. Whitlock fields at centers again. Dishy back to Whitlock. Range hang, providing an option, doesn't look back again. Whitlock coming back again. That wind's kicked up as well. I reckon that'll be just putting a little bit of doubt in the thrower's minds. Bit of a handler weave, handler iso. Diz kicks up. Gan brings it down though. Oh, he looked like he was going to put it, but he holstered it. Braden Chang has to lose a little bit of ground. He goes straight back to Gan. Well done, Braden. Now they've engaged More. the stack. Oh, Gan keeps it up. Oh, and he pops it up. He's got Whitlock there. <laughs> I don't know if it was for Whitlock, by the way. I, <laughs> I think you're right there. I don't think it was for Whitlock. I think that one was for Dennis Tran, but the wind just popped it up slightly. So you see it here again. Nice inside to Alex Gann. Has he got in his guts to keep that alive? Yeah, it was a nice grab. He faked the flick. He popped the flick. It sailed slightly over. Dennis Tran was kind of there, sandwiched by some ellipsis defenders, and then he popped it up. There's been a timeout. Timeout from Sunder, I believe. Yeah, I think even though they scored the goal, it certainly wasn't their cleanest point. I mean, if you look at Sunder's first offensive points at the start of the game versus that, that was a lot more hard work. Yes, they scored. Um, but, you know, you had to have layouts to keep the disc alive. You had a two-on-two -two in the end zone, and that wasn't necessarily your first target. Um, so I, I think it's a pretty smart call um, to actually just have a, have a moment and, and uh, talk over and reset what they're going to do offensively. Um, you see there from the, the break chances, Ellipsis getting, getting two more opportunities, but also converting two more of those and, and I think you see that in the energy that they're bringing defensively um, making life really hard for Sunder that last point The Ellipsis men have really stepped up their defence in the last couple of points and it shows the unpredictability of that wind though is doing no one any favours Agreed Sunder set on the line. Alex Gann's going to pull. Ellipsis coming out. Ash Sullivan imparting some words of wisdom. Yeah, are we, uh, I'll stand corrected in the chat, but I think we were saying earlier, Ash Sullivan could be the first coach in history to go back-to-back -back coaching back-to-back uh, -back Div 2 national wins and Div 1 national wins. Two medals in a week. Well, either way, you'll have a medal. Uh, so two medals in two weeks isn't too yeah, bad. Yeah, it's many days. Isn't, isn't a bad thing to have in your coaching curriculum. And fun fact, Moz, Div 2 men's final is the only final in nationals this year Lipsis didn't have representation in. Keys fields the pull to tool it. Hilden providing a cut. Sees McGuckin on the around coast sideline. Hilden streaming deep, but he's looked off. He's got Andrews on the centre. Keys on the under. Oh, he overthrows him. It's caught by Gav Moore. Alex Gann. Quick turnover and from hold on. Oh. No, hold on, hold on. Keys and Gav are having a moment, and Gav is absolutely filthy. Yeah, and Jono's let it go. Okay. <laughs> Gav put the toys out the cot, and Jono said, fine, have it. Gav Moore was not having a bar of that one. No. no I, I, I think Jono went, you know, you know what? You, you're probably right. Did you go back to the exact point? Maybe not, but um, there was that much separation. Like, even a couple of, of centimetres wasn't really going to make the difference. As we see here... 
the backhand from Andrews to Keys with that wind, it bobbled up at the last second. Keys hit it, but he couldn't get under it. It bladed. Gav Moore was right there for the catch. And he quickly got it in to Alex Gann. Here's that backhand again. Just see it bobbles up. Keys couldn't get under the rim. Gav Moore. So as we hit 430 people tuning in, we'd like to thank you all for your support. Feel free, please, to uh, jump over to the Ulti TV Patreon. We've dropped the link in the channel. Your support will mean that we can uh, continue bringing you high-quality Frisbee just like this all throughout the year. So Lips are still up one break. They still have that slight buffer, but Sunder are not rolling over easily, Moz. Much more noise from the sideline now to see Tulip with it. Tulip has Rob Andrew going deep. Seen this one before instead. Throws under to Foreman. Andrews did a number on Gav. Got a nice long gainer. Cupcake lost his uh, mark. Got it up the line. Tulip. They're all protecting the front cone, but Max Halden. <laughs> Sam McGuckin will be annoyed. He usually catches the goal. Max Halden, the one with the goal. Where did Max come from? Who was marking him? Uh, he was, he was, I think all the Sunder defenders just uh, overcompensated and tried to, um, tried to protect that front cone at all costs. See the replay here. The Andrews to tool it. You are correct there, Moz. All the Sunder defenders kind of flailed that space and Helden just slipped through. Yeah. Just slipped through sneaky. the fingers. Very sneaky. So there we go. Pops ellipsis up a break again. One away from half. Quick scoring. Yeah. Very quick scoring in this game. And three assists from Tom Chulet there. Two from Ollie Lochnan. Staying consistent. Uh, same same boy seeing a lot of the disc at the moment. Lots of noise from the ellipsis sidelines. Blakely to Gann. We big mark there. Oh, almost wow. a run through from Prendergast. Finds We again. Gann on this close sideline, marked tightly by McGuckin. Oh, he pops it up. Andrews eats it. There was not enough on that one to get it to Neil. He Laser down the line to tool it. This is big. This is big. Inside break flick to Prendergast. Finds Andrews. He had, you know, break side of the field open for a second there, but he didn't use it. Look in the around break. Oh, Tool has to get his guts, but it's too low. I think Tex got a piece of that. We. Sunder make quick work of that one, picking it up and moving it. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Uh, I reckon Pete Blakely had a hand block there. Certainly celebrated like he did. So we see the first turn. Yeah, you got to put it up a bit higher for if you got Rob in the way. Just almost second guessed himself. You see what I mean? Like he had that first pump fake and then went, you know, why not? But uh, maybe didn't even see. Yeah, it looks like Blakely did get a hand on that one. You're right there. I reckon he'll, he'll claim it at least. You get Why not? Tex, you get a piece of that? Just a little bit? You sure? You celebrated like it. All right. For those take out with Pete Blakely in fantasy playing along at home, notch one up. He's reasonably confident he got a hand on it. 
Replays suggest otherwise, but we'll give it to him. And that was a timeout called from Ellipsis. Unsurprising. Sunder breaking back on this one. This is Ellipsis now coming out. Their second opportunity at taking half. Sidelines getting big. To see some of the other New South Wales based teams sign a crowd on the sidelines. Yeah. Sunder with, uh, with two teams here this weekend. Slice playing. Dice on the sideline. Whitlock. She floats. I think that's landed in. Lochnan is going to be boy. Oh, he, he says, I don't no, want it. <laughs> well, I think he did want it, but I think uh, Tom was like, I'll take this. Playing. Looks like a little bit of a junky look here. So, first look at the Sunder junk. Great. Lochnan now, keys and tool at doing a lot of handler work. He finds McGuckin through the middle. There's Halden breaking through. Move it quickly before they clamp down. Lochnan back to Halden. Back to Toolet. He's calling for stuff down the field. Makes some moves. Trying to find something. Oh! There's a through disc to Lockton, but the question is, he almost landed on top of it. Were his hands underneath it? We're getting a replay, or are we? is Alex Gann accepting that one? And we see the replay here. It goes through. All right. Oh, yeah, it was up though. Oh, oh, we're seeing down calls from the sideline. Ollie locked in, accepting that it's a down call from the sideline. Here we see it again. Close, two very close ones. You can see in the replay the Chili Boys from the sideline giving an up call. So, accepting that it's a turnover, Gan picking it up. Players streaming deep, but Key sitting deep in the space. Oh, Holden always gets a hand on it on Sutton, locked in there. Sutton again, held him with a big mark, goes the around break to Alex Gann, gets on his knees for that. You see Gray on this close sideline. Oh, hand block! Big. Hand block from Toolet. It's a big play. John O'Keys with it, throws to Toolet. They can just keep doing this. This uh, zone's allowing handler movement from behind. So you'll just continue to see exactly that. He's again moving it for days. And as long as the handlers are comfortable to do so, they yeah. can continue to do that until the downfield creates the movement and creates the holes for them to break through. Tula and Keys looking pretty comfortable just moving it. Ooh, Sutton oh, Sutton went to bid but left his position and they're out now. 
got through to Andrews. They went Gucken to lock it on the far side now. Now Andrews again. There it is again with Ollie Lockin. Keys on the far sideline. He's surveying his options. He's got Lockin on the around backhand just on the far corner. He's trying to find something. Tula came in. Andrews with a little jinky backhand through. And Ellipsis take the half. That's half for Ellipsis. 8-6 is the gap. So Ellipsis up a break now. Sunder got to work on D to be getting those ones back. We'll be coming back just after half with some more, uh, more ultimate, more points from the men's final. moments learning ancient traditions golden hours spent pressing pause on time afternoons wild away absorbing wisdom and treasure hunts that never disappoint whatever brings you to Ballarat you'll always return remade
And welcome back to the second half action of the Australian Ultimate Championships men's final. Ellipsis are uh, halfway there. They took half eight six. Got broken early, but then managed to put a D run on. I think Ellipse is pulling two Sunder. Sunder have their O-line out there. Oakley, what's your pick for the second half? Let's call it. Let's uh, play some bets, please. Oh, I think the Ellipsis uh, boys are just going to keep continue firing. It took them a little bit to warm up, but once they got in their groove, they were doing really well. That uh, Sunder junkie look that they put out was working to slow them down, but they just looked really comfortable moving through it. And I think that if Lipsis keep their calm composure on O, they're going to keep, they're just going to keep steaming ahead. And now that they're up a break, as long as they keep holding on their offense, they're just going to take it away. It's definitely theirs to lose, you feel. It's under real challenge here. So that's Whitlock in the center field. He pops a big one up. He's got Gann underneath it. Oh, no hand from John O'Keefe there, but it provides enough. enough pressure to make Gann question the catch. He's slowly walking towards it. He's no dump. Andrews is coming back quickly. He pops it up. Oh, Gann, uh, McGuckin, beautiful read. Yeah, he adjusted really well, Sam. Copland pops it through. Inside backhand to Lochnan. And they storm the field. They're up and about over that one. They're getting rowdy on that change of score. Well, yeah, it's a puerile uh, humour from a few of those younger lads. So as you see there on the screen again, that pseudo D from John O'Keefe, there was no contact. He just threw his body up in the air. Great change of direction from McGuckin as the disc... A changed flight path in the air and came dropped a lot shorter than what we thought it was going to. And we're just hearing here Whitlock just got a little hand to it, which meant that it dropped a yeah. bit shorter than what initially was expected. Quick ditch to Copland and then floats that inside backhand out to Lochnam. We're just getting a score update from the women's bronze medal match behind us. Manly just took half, 8 2 on Rogue. Oof. It's all going uh, Lipsis' way. Getting the break at straight out of half. Not allowing Sunder to get any kind of momentum or, or build a uh, build their offense up, keep their D-line out there. They're going to need to put a D-run on regardless. As we see, this one might be going out for a brick. It is. Seen a few bricks so far this game. A few offsides also this game. I just don't think it's that hard. <laughs> get, out, bricks. get out there and show them, Moz. Good here. On this side for a reason now. Again <laughs> <laughs> with the disc. Hitting Day on this close sideline. He's got Tran streaming. How and is he that? keeps it in. Fisher Day. Lovely put, Fisher Day to Dennis Tran. Got a bit of Bjorn Borg about him all day with the uh, visor and the locks. Oh, the way the hair flops up the inside of the visor. That's a really nice throw. Quick response from the boys of Sunder.
So all the Ellipsis offense have to continue to do now is hold. They're That's up. It. They're up that break. So as long as they continue to hold their O and don't let Sunder break back, they'll just walk away with it. Uh, Sunder obviously need to work super hard on D to get back two breaks now. There's Fisher Day there. Two goals, one assist. He's chalking them up nicely. Look at that hair in the breeze. Massive pull going up there from Whitlock. As a, no, did Brick. not stay in. Two bricks in a row. It's really not that hard, just landed in. Moz here is probably going to put on a pulling class after Nationals to give everyone a lesson on just how to keep the disc in the line. Sign up for it if you're, if you're interested. How big does it feel? 36 metres long? 100 metres 36 wide? Not a small target to shoot for. So Chulet with the disc, he's got Copland on the under. Oh, it threw his hand. I don't, I'm not putting it all on Timo because I think they haven't done him any favours. But no. if they're not throwing over him, they're throwing under him. Yeah, it looked like he was almost going to put the hammer yeah. up, but he holstered it. Tran with the disc now, he's wanting Gan. Copland peels off. Oh, Neil getting big. Back to, back to Tran. Neil's gone. Got McGuckin who's picked him up, however. Oh, Fisher Day on the around backhand. But it bladed. A little bit of a rush of blood to the head for Day, looking to throw his second goal in as many points. Missed opportunity now. So a couple of turns this point now. Toilet bringing it back in on that. Close sideline. Halden providing a big cut in the around. Bissett going, going deep. Copland, there's a nice one to yeah, him. It's just, just to him. McGuckin now. Gan closing in. Finds keys. He's got Halden and, and Gavmore closing in. Gav's playing off the top of the stack. He's going to look to peel off on anything as we see a hut oh. go up. This one might go out the side. Or out the back. Out the or back. Oh, almost out 10 points for here in the light post. Who threw that one? Bill Foreman. As a really, really enthusiastic member of the public or someone out the back there tries to return the disc and just throws it over the other fence. <laughs> right. Uh, this is why he's on that side of the fence, and, and the other guys are, the other guys are on this side. Yeah. Gam with the disc now. He's looking for Whitlock up the line beautifully. Way he's got Neil deep. He looks him off, and he finds Gavmore in the centre of the field. Neil tries for the greatest. Does it stay in? Although, however, I think we're having a call that. Sunder Nick Sutton on the sideline saying it's out. Here's the replay. Yeah, yeah. Toe was on the line when the when the court happened. It's a turn. Great work there from Mike Neal though. John O'Key is going to be bringing that one in. He finds Toolett up the line. He's got McGuckin on the under. Nice under there. Toolett working hard. A little dishy back out the line. Walks the around backhand to McGuckin. Keys on the around. Bill Foreman. He's got a few options. Keys gets the backwards dump. Goes to Foreman again. Very lasery flick. Looks off John O'Keys. Finds John O'Keys on the open side line. McGuckin! Again. Once again. McGuckin absolutely lighting up the stats with those goals. Went quiet for a bit, but now he's back. 
John O'Keys to McGuckin. Another timeout called here, Moz. Yeah, Sunday getting their opportunities, just not able to convert, unfortunately. And that's what they, they it's not just good enough to uh, to get these. You need to be able to convert them as well. As we uh, bring in Mr. Ozzy TV himself. We'll shortly be joined by Mike Palmer. to give a shout out to uh, Felix Shardlow over in Padova in Italy. You can see him up on screen now. Uh, if you head on over to that link, you'll be able to see the entire EUCF season, including the finals. Currently, there's the uh, spring tour. So all the Frisbee you can get your mitts on, uh, sign up. It's your champ. Big shout out to Felix. So coming back after that timeout, Sunday need to consolidate on their offense and their defense, need to try and at least at a minimum hold their offensive points and break back on defense. Because 10-7 down, Ellipsis is going to walk away with this one slightly. Whitlock bringing the disc in. Van der Weeden, Gan. Oh, he jacks it big. Two He's got Yo underneath it, locked and trailing. Well he done, bids. Ollie. Well done, Ollie Lockman. He knew he just needed to hold his position there. Might not have been getting the disc, but could stop his opponent from getting it. And that was a poach off the back as well. Really well done. Great D there from the Ellipsis boys, reading it perfectly. Ollie Lochnam, one goal, three assists, one block. Timmy Clopland picking up the disc. Ellipsis looking to stretch this one out even further now. Yeah, this one will really hurt. Sunder needs to put everything on the line now. Andrews losing some space into the end zone. Copland. Good D. Oh, beautiful up inside flick there to Andrews. Not a lot of downfield movement. He pops it up. That is, oh, look at the wind bobble. Nice read. Whitlock. Oh, oh, wow. Bids. Scuba from Whitlock. Oh, trying to look for Gan. Matt Daly getting into the contest as well. Andrews, he Tries does again. it again. Whitlock did enough. Whitlock I don't know if he got anything on it. Does it again? <laughs> so Sander bringing it back again. Blakely steals it from the hands of Neil, but gives it to him anyway. Just need to relax here. It's been a frantic point. Van der Weeden down the line, and then he just gives it to Blakely. Manages to keep that foot back on the line at the front of the end zone on his slowdown, so he didn't have to actually run back. He managed to keep his momentum with the foot on the sideline, so he could just pop the dishy up to Blakely. Yep. As we see here, this backhand huck from Andrews, it just bobbled in the wind. 
Whitlock snatching it over the top of Dinkelberg. This scuba here with the D from Daly drawing a, a nice lot of contact. And again, this huck from Andrews where Whitlock tapped it enough. Dinkelberg got hands to it but couldn't couldn't hold on to it. Not exactly clean offense, Moz, but... No, it was the dirtiest point of the game, but Sunder did what they needed to. That's exactly right. If you're managing to get the score on the board, it doesn't matter how you got it. That's it. So Sunder bringing it back to within two. They get a break here, it's game on. But right now, Ellipsis have this kind of two, three point buffer. And that's just enough to keep things pretty comfortable for them. And there's the pull. Yeah, that wind is wreaking havoc. It's holding that disc in the air. Lockton lets it ground and walks away from it. It's <laughs> the second time he's been called away from it. Sunder's sideline getting massive now. He winds up. He's got McGuckin deep. Oh, not quite in. Taps it in, doesn't need to. Andrews, McGuckin to Andrews. McGuckin behind the disc this time. Yeah. Almost milked it in for a goal. Yeah, Mitch Sutton with the bid. Just went over his head. Better read from Sam. See why Tool had got locked it away from that disc now. See that Huck go up. Mitch Sutton bidding to try and get a fingertip to it. Andrew's providing the cut. The round flick goes up. You probably need to send a different match up to McGuckin now. He's, he's hurt and he's starting to become a real headache. That's exactly right. It's their primary look. At least at least force Ellipsis to look at their secondary option, but right now plan A is working. So that's Sam McGuckin with six goals and one assist. And Rob Andrews, two goals, one assist, one block. We did see that turn from him just before. Gathering quite the crowd here. They're getting loud. Andrews. Let's kept this one in bounds, boss. Oh, my. And guess what? They were offside. <laughs> <laughs> it was not one, it's the other. You actually pull it in and you're offside. Moz absolutely keeping his thoughts out loud there. Feedback's a gift, Oakley. I've always said it. Whitlock looking to immediately move the disc. Blakely taking a lot of contact from Lou. Wee dishes it quickly to Van der Weeden. Goes the around flick but can't quite get there. He's looking for Cheng. He has to lose a little bit of ground. It would have been a high count too. Oh, inside backhand to Gann. Finds Blakely again on the inside backhand. Near on this close sideline. Well done. <laughs> Looking at his options, surveying the field. Gann there, the centre. Oh, keys on hot pursuit. Goes up to Blakely. No one near him. Miscommunication on the D there, apparently. So, yeah, that's just a not negotiable for Sunder's O now. They just need to score. They, they can't get broken again. It's the Sunder D line where they need to start forcing uh, Ellipsis to start looking at plan B, plan C, plan D. But right now, they, they don't really need to look away from their primary, um, their primary cutters. So we've had clean holds for the last five points, which is great for Ellipsis. Not, well, not great for Sunder. Sunder need to start breaking back. They're getting, I mean, 
the positive for Sunder is that they're actually getting the turn. The turns are coming. It's putting it in is a bit of the bigger challenge. But part A, they're, they're, they're at least seeing the disc, which is half the battle. That's exactly right. So looking at stats now, Peter Blakely, two goals, two assists, one block. He's doing the work. Absolutely. Still got it. You ever been to New Zealand? No? Uh, I have a couple of times. Where uh, you've got an invite to, uh, to commentate in New Zealand. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Send me the dates. We'll take that. I only fly up the point end of the plane. Business class, thank you. And Offside guess what? Call Mars. Guess what? <laughs> Can you guys just pull bricks instead? Mozzie's, Mozzie's getting a bit filthy here, everyone. If the if the pool stays in, we're getting <laughs> offside calls. I like this. It's a bit spicy. It's a spicy meatball. All right. Tool it again. Are we going to see McGuckin peeling off the back? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's, he's looking for keys. Tight mark finds four men on the far sideline. His defense is getting intense. Bit, 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 bit. Oh, Chang. Andrew's be. there. He's just stepped up a notch here. McGuckin on the under this time. He's thrown. He's got. Oh! Whoa! Huge block. Oh! Huge block. The NZ boy getting it done here for the Sydney team. Dennis Tran, Fisher Day comes back. Tran again. Lots of small movement, just trying to play possession right now. He threads the inside to Gav Moore. He's got the open break, he doesn't take it. Cheng, Tran on the back. This is frantic, but it's Flick patient. Flick around to Chang. He's calling for something, calling for a continuation. Stack's too deep. Stack is very deep. Goes back to Tran. Looks for Fisher Day. Halden trying to get the D. McGuckin! Huge bid. On the far sideline now. Inside. Oh, my goodness. Rob Andrews. There's the They're break. They're doing Gav Moore. There's the to break. To Dennis Tran. There's the break. You called for big bids, Moz, and they answered. <laughs> Dennis Chan there wearing his friend's number 52 because he's done his ACL. That's lovely. Wearing the 52, not doing the ACL. But uh, nice little uh, tribute to his mate. That Sunder's first break since the score was at 5-6. And I think we might be seeing a timeout. I think we are. And it's probably a good call if you're uh, if you're ellipsis. Just try and take the heat out of things a little bit. We heard it from the side. Like, obviously a really um, deliberate message from Sunder because even prior to that block, as we see the Angels in the outfield, Brian Ackman, um, prior to that block, this, the noise from the Sunder sideline had really ratcheted it up. So they got the outcome, but that's only one. They need at least one more. And the, the pressure that that sideline talk provides, um, I don't think a lot of people realise how, how difficult it can be, intimidating it can almost be when you're on the field and you're hearing this sideline get more and more intense as Rowdies. they're getting closer and yeah. closer to their end zone. Uh, doubt, as, like, as the defence or even as the offence, doubt starts to creep into your mind. If that, if that sideline's getting really rowdy and that's not in support of you, it can be intimidating. And conversely, the uh, adrenaline would be pumping now for these Sunder guys. They know that the last seven uh, that were out in the line got it done. It's now up to the next seven, but all of their teammates, as well as the other Sunder team, as we mentioned before, there are two Sunder teams here. So their uh, sister team, brother team, other team, uh, all... Some of them cleared it off and with a beverage, but all uh, using their voices. That's exactly right, Miles. Although you said the next seven getting it done, but it doesn't look like the line has changed that much. We're still <laughs> seeing more. Maybe the same seven, yeah. yeah. Tran, Gan. A lot of the same faces on that line that we just saw previously. Cheng. 
They're putting the trust in their hands right now. I hope you can hear that on the stream because it's getting loud right now. Oh, there it is. Is it going to stay in field? And guess what? It's not an offside. It's not an offside. Moz is happy, everyone. We can go play for his. All right, Jono Keys with the disc. Jono's got it. Looks, fakes towards Halden, then re-engages him. Canterby getting up. Halden's finally free back, but instead he looks at the side arm and it's a massive gainer to Rob. Rob lets oh. one go, it's a flat one. It's Foreman underneath it, he's gonna jog onto it. That's a sweet point from uh, Ellipsis. Takes the air out of Sunder's balloon to an extent. I thought when Keyes had it, that would have been a side arm and probably an eight count, I reckon. I think you're right there, Moz. That stall count was getting incredibly high, and that was almost looks like a little bit of a Hail Mary put up there from yeah. John O'Keys. I reckon. It was just very lucky that Rob Andrews was underneath it because it was starting to blade on that way back down. Massive put from Rob. Bill Foreman had nice separation on Mike Neal. He was on the chase, but it was gone. Absolutely gone. Trotted off. Well, I think Mike was actually creeping in on the first. So, so when... Um your man, Keys had it. Mike would have been looking under to go, okay, the, the first uh, Hail Mary shot, he's probably creeping under to, to make half a bit on uh, on Rob. But then as soon as Rob caught it, Mike's Let's out of position. Let's go, Massive throw, though, as well. And Mike was doing the right thing there. He was trying to read the play, knowing that something big was probably going to come up as that stall count was getting higher. Yeah. It was just, you know, did not, luck did not fall in their way in the fact that it fell into the hands of Rob Andrews, who has an absolute cannon on him. I was just throwing out some more banter about the pools. Something he's really passionate about online. Everyone, get around him on that. All right, that one rolling out the back. Was that one better for you, Moz? You happy with that? Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Wouldn't mind it rolling in the end, like staying in the end zone, just rolling. But uh, just take a little bit of heat off next it's time. Better, better than a brick. I'm just trying to find where the parameters are for it this. Just landed in, yeah. Copland providing good defense. Whitlock, Whitlock looks back to Vanderweed and he gets it straight back again. Gans in the in the play on this close sideline. There's Chan getting involved. Finds Gan again. Very stagnant downfield. Handler's doing a lot of work here. Pick call, pick Pit called. Call. Haven't seen many of those. No. I certainly haven't heard a team cheer for them like Ellipses are, but uh, using anything that they can to get their energy up. Tuller on the heels of Blakely. These two played together multiple campaigns. Whitlock turning. Oh, Gan looked like he was going to put it then, but he bolstered. Blakely looks like he's going to put it, and he threads the inside today. He's now got the break side yeah, free. Yeah. Wee puts it. It's a bit flat, but and he throws it straight into a Lipsis defender. So Blakely and Tullet again, as I said, play being teammates, both at New South Wales as well as the Australian level. McGuckin on the open under. Throw a goal. Oh, he's looking for the around backhand, but he's not getting it. There's Tullet. There is a pick in the stack yeah, again. Yeah, Tim just came straight out. The intensity is rising, and with that intensity comes a little bit more scrappy play yeah. sometimes, Moz. Tullet looks to get to Copeland. Can't. Can't move it. Finds Instead to Lochnan. Lochnan with it. Goes the inside flick. Nice inside flick to the front of the stack with Tulit. Tulit fakes flick. Keeps looking on the Blake side. He's, he wants Copland. Now instead goes back to Ollie Lownan. Give go. Gets it back. Tom has looked to the end zone instead. Goes with the push into McGuckin. McGuckin right on the end zone line. Has a completely free player in Lownan. Eventually finds him and uses him. 
an ellipsis break back, 13-10 now. They are in control of the game. They are two away from being national championships, uh, national champions for 2024. So funny thing about that one, Moz, if, you, if we can get the replay there from the throw from McGuckin, he looked like he almost wanted to throw like the little dad backhand. Yeah. As that D, that huck from Wee went straight into the hands of Lachlan. And so as we see here, McGuckin gets the, uh, the up line on the doorstep here. He looks like he wants to throw the little backhand to, to Ollie down the line there, but realizes the defender might get a hand. So he has a second turn, throw, turns the disc around his hand and throws the flick. Mate, you had all day. He had all like. day. <laughs> Son to defenders, having a little bit of a snooze there. So that's McGuckin getting behind the disc again this time. Six goals, two assists. He's been involved in the vast majority of the ellipsis points thus far. Yeah, he's had a blinder. And Ollie Lochnan, two goals, three assists, a couple of blocks now. So Sunders, uh, other team cheering them on. You'd say this game's getting a bit dicey, Moz. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I apologise to everyone. <laughs> we don't do puns here on Ulti TV. Only criticisms of bricks. And what's your what's Guess your what? thoughts on that one? Is it coming no, back? This one's all right. This one's all right. Well done, Tom. So it's with Blakely. Blakely looks over to Gan. Again, he could make a big gainer, doesn't. So holds on to it. He might need to re Rob Andrews. You usually see Rob bid oh! for that. Nice bid. Whoa! Clean D from Dinkelberg. He's going as well. You've got to hold here. This is it for Sunder. You've got to get this back. Copland got two to beat. He beats both of them. He catches. Timmy Copland from Rob Andrews. Rob's got had an absolute cannon this game. So Ellipsis break again. Game point for Ellipsis now if they break this last one. One point away. Crowning ellipsis, amazing first bid. So last one, two breaks in a row for ellipsis to just start trotting away towards the towards the flag, at the end of this game. And as we thank the 774, sorry, changing now 821 online. Ooh. Thank you for joining in. Throw your comments in the chat. We love to read them. After we saw the Ellipsis slice stream, well, I think a day or two ago, Moz, is this what you thought the scoreline would be looking at the rematch in the final? No, I thought it'd be a bit closer, uh, but, and I did say it. I don't know why it's a thing, but people say it's hard to beat a team twice in a tournament. Um, but Ellipsis just adjusted. They've, they've taken the learnings out of that first pool game. Uh, that was really close. And Rob Andrews has made a fool of me. I, I got stuck into him in the semi for eating a uh, dried mee goreng packet, basically two minute noodles. I thought, right, that's not breakfast of champions, but it's quite literally about to be breakfast of champions. Just sorry, in injury on the rundown. Oh, injury on the run rundown there from Jaira Lu. Almost made it. She almost made it through the whole tournament. A little chant on the sideline here, calling for Dinkelberg to get on the field. I don't think he got on. No, John O'Keys. So Alex Gann bringing the disc in. Oh, he looked for Fisher Day on the around, but it was a Great coverage. 
It's too close on the dump. Oh, just got Whitlock it. finds Whitlock, goes straight back again. He's got Tran, but he looks him off. Cheng providing an option. Ooh. Tran on the inside flick. This is some tight match day. Beautiful inside again. Gab's gone. He, oh, Fisher Day. He keeps it. Yeah, but because he bowled it, it meant that uh, Gav needed to change his cut. Gav, Gav had about eight metres on uh, on Tim McLeese. Yeah. But now he's too deep, so he'll have to come under. There's still a lot around the disc. A lot of players around the disc, so they're going to have to cycle back into the stack quick to reckon, create some space. I reckon Whitlock's going to hit deep space here. Oh, he overthrows Tram, but Day saves it. He saved the oh, day. There you go. There's number two. There's Chang. He has yielding space out here. Again, Gav Moore. Good job, Sunder. It was a little bit slicey and dicey through the centre there, but they kept possession. Not sorry at all, Moz, for no, that one either. I, I just saw it. I was like, oh, here she's going to say it. <laughs> she's just realised as she's here. Oh, no. So it's 14-10 with a pun count, 14-11, uh, sorry, with a pun <laughs> count of two. Some feedback online is that the Sunder O is looking a bit cloggy. Yeah, I think that's spot on. I think even when we saw that stoppage, um, when when Mike Neal had it, they had like probably four players in or around the disc, but not in a structured way, not by intention. Um, so it was all just a little bit panicked. But uh, now, if Sunder are going to win it, they're going to win it from their own line. And Ellipsis have four opportunities to put this in. And they will be the 2024 national champions. Sunder know it. All their sideline bringing it. So we got Sunder coming back out on defense. And they're going to have to keep playing defense for the rest of the game now to win this. Nick Whitlock's going to be uh, with the pool. He's had three blocks this game so far. Uh, three of the f like four kind of blocks that have occurred. Uh, he needs to keep bringing that big defense back for Sun to stay in the game. Well, you need to send him to McGuckin. Because uh, McGuckin, similarly, has clogged the stat sheet. And this pool is in, and it is not an offside, so we're going to play Frisbee. Keys with it. Ooh. That's what Moz is about. Tulip with the disc. Tulip gives a little shoulder shimmy. Moves it back. Back to Keys. Keys in the middle of the end zone. And that's not going to bother them. He's got a big gainer out to McGuckin if he wants it. He uses it now. Just out of the end zone. There's going to be a pick yes. and it didn't affect. So it's McGuckin with the disc. Getting a bit scrappy now. I think Sam should keep this and he will. Cheng marking him. So it will be in on zero. They're just going to sort themselves out. There's a lot of space. McGuckin's all over in the corner. The stack quite far away. Keys goes up the line and it opts instead to go back and then cycles it through to Cupcake. Tullet throws the flick, uh, throws the backhand. It's going to be trailing away from Rob Andrew and it's a turn. Gavmore doing enough just to get his body in the yeah. way there because it meant Andrews couldn't beat at it. Yeah without having to bid through. And Rob doesn't need mu uh, much of an invite. So just while we have the opportunity, I think it's a 13-6 uh, on the other field there between Rogue and Manly. Gav's poached but doesn't realise it. Uh, there's, and Whitlock's poached out here as well, but they're running it down the sideline. Travel call, not a stoppage play on. Gan. Got it at the halfway point. Looks flick. Instead, goes back, back to Cheng. Pick in the stack again, Moz. Oh, like you said, you know, this is last game of the entire tournament. Tired bodies. You're not always making the right cuts. You can, your offensive structures can break down a bit. And it'll be Cheng self-checking it in. He's got Chewy at the front of the stack. He, Chewy's probably uh, 34 on the screen there. He's probably going to need to come back to the dump position. He does. Instead goes to Tran. Dennis Tran. Looks for the low inside backhand. Instead, back to Braden. 
Braden finally throws it into the middle. Ah, there's another pick. I think that one will affect. And no, we'll go back. Rob and uh, Gav having an animated discussion. All smiles. So, Braden will have to throw the same throw again. Again, goes up the line, tee cut, gets it. Again, again, cocking that uh, big flick, but doesn't throw it. Goes to Tran. Tran to Gan. Gan getting it. Shooting now. The flick to Gav. Gav moves it out wide. We on this close sideline. Nice throw to Whitlock. Whitlock right on the end zone line. McGuckin marking him. He throws a nice big up around over keys oh! to Cheng. They're slowly There's doing it, Mars. There's one. I'm still backing ellipsis in. I think they're uh, short odds from here, but there's one. I mean, as we said before, Moz, that the same seven seem to be continually doing the work on this yep. D-line. Uh, and, you know, two, three, four points. They're going to start to really fatigue. And uh, But Ellipsis have the opportunity to switch up between their lines slightly for that offense because if your D gets a block, they're going to have to play O eventually. So they've got a little bit more to work with right now, although still working through a lot of their key uh, key players. And just a quick update we have right now. Yeah, Manly up 13-6 on Rogue in the women's gold, uh, women's bronze final, sorry, happening on the field behind us. So there's been a timeout called from, I would assume, Ellipsis. I think they're probably the only one with timeouts left at this point in time. Yeah. And the message here will be we've done everything right to put ourselves in a position to win this game. We've got multiple cracks at it. So here we see the stats. So Ellipsis have had six breaks, uh, Sunder four. Sunder with 14 turns to Ellipsis 12. Sunder with only five clean holds to Ellipsis six. And uh, yeah, Sunder have had four of their 12 break opportunities where Ellipsis have takes, taken six of their 14 break opportunities. Which is why we see them still up that break now. Up, yeah, up two breaks. Apologies. So ellipsis, I reckon, would have uh, would have called a good point, played a good point. So I'm just giving uh, Braden Cheng some feedback. Feedback's a gift. And Moz is good at giving feedback, everyone important ellipsis is o-line they would have called this o-line it'd be their set o-line you see andrew chulet mcguckin will probably be on there ollie keys halden halden to score the goal Halden to catch the goal is my prediction Okay, you've heard it here first, ladies and gents. Put your predictions in on the comments. He's a nice fella, Max. I like him. So. He's a lovely fella. And there it is from Alex Gann. It's, it was an offside. But they did not call, however, really? Moz. Yeah. Oh, controversial. Sutton on the mark. Keys with it. So they are running a junk, which is always dangerous when you're playing for the game. Keys. Oh, Halden's, Halden's gone. Deep. <laughs> it's a transition, though. Contact there. Toolet having absolutely none of it. Yeah, uncontested foul. So Toolet with a dis immediately back to Keys. Foreman through the centre, but doesn't use him goes back again to troll it happy to just no, pass it, it between yeah. themselves just go one two one two one two not much happening downfield for them either keys finally getting through he almost looked like he had something but didn't quite use it andrew's coming getting involved but just goes back to tool it again They're just pointing, savoring it. yeah pointing to hell or oh. andrews does well there to keep that one involved Halden calling mcguckin into it 
Andrews, oh, finds Keys back to Halden. Slowly starting to break through Keys. Halden, oh, he looks him off, almost puts it. Comes back to Tullet to get into space. Foreman on this close sideline. But goes the around to Keys. Yeah, just playing with him, Oakley. Just toying with him. It looks like, like it's uh, Like transition. a lion with their prey. McGuckin on that bobbly disc there as the wind gets involved. Back to Keys. McGuckin through the centre. He's got Andrews on this close side and he bobbles and he keeps it. Whoa. That's heart stopping. I believe it's been a little little travel called or trying to hear the hear the discussion here. I think Rob uh, quite um, fairly say, well, how can I bobble it if I haven't got, how can I travel if I haven't uh, taken possession yet? A bit stiff. It's intense out there, Moss. So Andrews with the disc. He goes back to Keys. It's transition to match now. Andrews there in the centre of the field. Finds Keys and a nice gainer. Someone's McGuckin free. providing an option. There's Andrews. <laughs> Where's my man? Where's There's my Keys. man? There's Keys. Andrews with the disc. Mozzie's gun for Halden Keys. He goes oh. round to Halden. Oh. Halden's got the disc now. He might. Oh, there's a travel called. Here we go. Get in the end zone, Maxi. Oh, it's going back to Keys. You might have, might have another go at this one here, Moz. Yeah, he's pointing. Look, he's pointing to the end zone. Yeah, he's Babe Ruthing it. You call the. Play. I'm just going to watch Max Oakley. So Keys with the disc is looking for Andrews at the dump. He's got Foreman on the close sideline. Ellipsis men have done it. Ellipsis are the national champion for 2024. You killed Bill Foreman. Congratulations, you also won. Thunder boys looking absolutely devastated yeah. by that one, Moz. Now at a late charge. Had, uh, had good momentum early, but Ellipsis re responded really, really well. Late charge from Sunder, but it wasn't enough. Uh, Looks just, just marching it down the field with a lot of composure. Always risky when you are playing a transition zone um, on game point. And I think they just had enough players free to get down to the red zone and uh, patiently walk it in. So congratulations to Ellipsis. Congratulations to the Ellipsis men on this one. Uh, we don't have the final updates yet from the women's bronze medal match. I believe it's done. Looks like it's, oh no, it's, still, going, it's still going there. So uh, we can hopefully give you those updates in the next game. 13-6. 13-6 still to Manly. Don't think that score's changed much. Up next, we do have the women's gold medal match between the two Ellipsis teams, Asterix versus Ampersand. It's the Ellipsis showdown. Tale of time there, Moz. Yeah, no, they've, uh, they've had a pretty good tournament, you'd say, if it's Ellipsis, Ellipsis, Ellipsis. See what it did there, because then ellipsis is three dots. Anyway, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, no, I got that one. All oh, yeah, right, yeah. okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you're allowed to make them. Anyway, uh, on behalf of uh, everyone here, uh, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in. I think we had 600 concurrent viewers at uh, at some point. So uh, thanks also to the Ulti TV stream, 716. Uh, thanks heaps to the Ulti TV team in partnership with Ultimate Australia, uh, the Australian Flying Disc Association and the city of Ballarat. So we'll be back shortly, I think around 1 p.m., maybe just after, uh, to bring you, as Oakley said, the Ellipsis v. Ellipsis Women's Final. So we find out who will be crowned uh, champions of the female division. Tune in then. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere.